So now I'm just going to talk about uh, a new installation I'm doing. Uh, I'm actually going to put up a, uh, a TESUP, that's a T-E-S-U-P, uh, it's the name of the brand, TESUP Atlas 2.0 wind turbine. It's a, two, it's a max 2 kilowatt wind turbine. Uh, so I thought I'd just sort of show a, a video of, uh, of uh, the installation. Uh, and then the connection to the to the to the system. I'm not expecting this to be as good as a solar uh, power installation. It's quite expensive, and it's probably in terms of a payback, uh, probably probably wouldn't meet most uh, rates uh, rates of returns that you'd want. But uh, just as a, uh, as an interest, I thought I'd share uh, what we're doing. So about uh, five months ago, I installed this uh, little weather station up here, um, and it's been monitoring uh, for me particularly just the the wind performance. Uh, to see whether it's worthwhile actually putting a, a, an installation of wind turbine here. Uh, we've been averaging about 4.85 metres per second. Uh, we haven't had some big gales, so it's not been uh, too bad. It's probably just about enough to make it worthwhile, uh, certainly to make the wind turbine turn around. So we'll, uh, we'll have a look. So uh, one of the first things you need to decide uh, with a wind turbine is where you're going to site it. Um, most wind turbines will work off a pole mounted to the side of your building, top of your roof. Um, I'm going to try and avoid doing that um, for the primary reason I want to try and get as high as possible. Uh, if you saw, I had the wind station um, on, a, on a pole and I've actually varied the, the pole height for that to see what the difference in wind speed is. And actually going from, uh, you know, a ground level uh, where it definitely wouldn't be worth sighting most wind turbines uh, up to uh, probably um, six metres. And then I've had the pole as high as 10 metres, uh, actually as, as high as one of the telegraph poles. And there's actually about one metre per second wind speed difference between 10 metres and about six metres. So I decided rather than try and uh, put a wind turbine off the side of a house with a big pole system, I thought I'd try and uh, uh, build it from a tower. So buy, uh, buy a, 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 tire, a tower that probably is designed mostly for, uh, for perhaps... Um, uh, microwave dishes and things or, or for, for sighting uh, uh, other uh, electronics uh, and uh, I'll install it on the top of a tower. So sadly the first thing you have to do when you're building a tower is dig a great big hole. Uh, so this is a one meter by one meter by one meter uh, hole. Uh, I've just got a slight uh, eight centimeter lip above the surface which I've uh, shuttered out but this is where we'll be filling with uh, Gen 1 concrete and uh, which the tower will be installed on top of that. So second stage of the uh, tower base complete so I dug the hole uh, now filled it with uh, Gen 1 uh, concrete I uh, need about uh, four or five days to really sort of set off properly there and then I'll start installing the tower. So I've just unpacked the Atlas 2.0 here, uh, just getting ready to start the installation process. As I said, I'm not going to do an installation video. There's a very good one online themselves by Tessup that shows how you, how you put it together. But just a couple of tips uh, actually uh, for you as you install. Um, I've just removed this top section. Uh, there's some Allen key bolts that go around the bottom just for a couple of reasons. One, and you should be able to see here, the three wires that provide the AC out of this uh, turbine generator um, they tend to get frayed, uh, I can see already just by movement through the post, there's fraying around the edge here, there was fraying here, and there's fraying further down. So I've just sort of taken these together and I'm going to suggest that you just simply drop uh, a couple of grommets, one there uh, for the wires that you're then going to connect uh, through to your charge controller, and then uh, one just up here uh, into this area here. Uh, it should make it safe and uh, avoid maintenance in the future. So here we are, we've uh, finished the two grommets. So one grommet entering into the generator, uh, one grommet uh, leaving the generator. Just put a little bit of glue around that just to keep it in place uh, as it's quite a tight squeeze. But uh, that's going to really uh, help improve the long lasting uh, uh, sort of maintenance free aspect of, um, of the wiring within the generator itself. So let's look at another couple of suggestions I've got. This is the TESUP uh, charge controller. Uh, that is recommended to go with uh, the Atlas 2.0. Um, just uh, in terms of installation of this uh, box, um, actually the best way clearly to install it is to via the uh, the sort of normal cabinet enclosure holes through here. Unfortunately, in the way that they've designed this, uh, it's probably enough. It's possible to see inside there. Maybe if I turn towards the the light in here, you can see. Um, inside, they've actually mounted the uh, side. Uh, uh, bolts for this top section going directly through the hole. So you're going to have to remove these side 
uh, bolts here first and this side uh, and then uh, put your uh, uh, your, um, your, your, your your screws through to be able to connect so that's the first thing also just have a quick look inside your charge controller I mean these uh, are relatively well made but uh, a little bit basic uh, I found uh, this particular circuit board uh, loose inside. It's supposed to be attached by this sticky pad here. It's not very sticky at all. Uh, I've just added some 3M adhesive pads and then uh, we'll just make sure that's sort of stuck uh, to the back uh, close to the uh, cooling vanes. So the other thing just to bear in mind, uh, you know, I've attached this uh, onto a couple of uh, pieces of wood. Make sure you leave plenty of gaps beside the, the, the back of it uh, to be able to uh, allow air to flow past the cooling vanes. And that's the same situation on the back of this uh, Delta uh, inverter. I've uh, a bit difficult to see behind there, but I've uh, I've left plenty of space behind uh, in, in the gap. So I've chosen an 8.2 meter galvanised uh, steel tower. It's self-supporting. This one doesn't need guide uh, guidelines. I may attach guidelines later just for security, but uh, it's perfectly uh, safe to. Uh, to go up on the system here to the top uh currently up to about uh six meters got the final piece to put on and uh i'm just working out how to put the turbine and the last piece on at the same time given the height but we'll see so uh this is just the final top section of the tower uh there we've got the assembled uh tessup atlas uh, 2.0 uh quite easy to install if you follow the online video from tessup uh the only thing that i'm going to do uh, in addition to this uh, just a sort of another tip uh probably uh i will actually add uh, double uh double nuts with some loctite uh thread lock just on here um i did notice as uh as i tightened them up and then moved them around they were starting to get loose again you don't really want that coming loose whilst it's up the top uh it's a bit of a bit of a way up to get to uh, fix it but uh, perfectly easy to install and uh i'm now just going to make up a plate uh to go on the top of the tower uh, and that will be the platform for which the uh, uh, the Atlas sits. So here's the uh, Atlas 2 installed uh, on the top of a 9 metre tower. Uh, working quite well, I've got a little bit of motion on the tower. Uh, I'm going to use some guy ropes uh, just to sort of give it a little bit of extra stability. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be affecting performance, but I don't really want it causing any stress. And uh, that's about, so what, about, f about 5 metres per second. So I've just uh, installed the turbine. Uh, we've got a reasonable amount of wind, certainly enough to, should be enough to get it going. About 4.8 meters per second on the uh, uh, weather station. So inside, uh, here's the charge controller. You can't see anything on the uh, display because that's really just for battery bolts. We've got it obviously set to the inverter setting. Uh, we've got it set in, in run position, number one being the brake. I have had a multimeter across uh, here and uh, we're generating about 45 uh, to 50 uh, AC volts. Uh, and then uh, here we're getting about anything between 36 and 42 volts DC. Uh, I've actually got, um, I've actually sort of split the two uh, MPPs. Uh, so I've actually got uh, one set just going to a couple of solar panels and I'll explain why that in a minute, but the other two feeding in. Uh, it's generating about 250 to 300 watts at the moment. So I've split the two uh, MPP uh, inputs and I've actually put um, two 300 watt solar panels uh, going through the second set here. So it's a uh, second set going to 300, two, two 300 watt panels. The reason I've done that is that the solar panels generate enough constantly, certainly during the day, uh, to keep the inverter going. What happens uh, with the wind, when you get variable wind uh, and it drops below uh, the 30 volts uh, supply, uh, you end up with the inverter going uh, into, a, into a sort of standby mode. Uh, and then it takes uh, another sort of minute or two when it catches back up to go back in. If you have actually some uh, sort of basic solar power, so just a small amount of solar power going through, it keeps the inverter ticking over and therefore the wind power uh, is instantaneously uh, converted into AC. Uh, so um, that sort of seems to be helping getting the maximum amount out of the wind turbine.